Shalom, shalom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Everybody, how y'all doing? Hey, welcome to the Sabbath Saturday e church service being brought to you by the Harvest Broadcast. Hey, I welcome each and every one of you all to Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, located right here in the heart of Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. I am Pastor K. Uh, Kelvin Dunn, senior lead pastor and founder, and the awesome, wonderful lady Z, aka Zenia Dunn, my awesome, wonderful wife, my best friend, my uh, administrative helpmate, my all in all. Hello, somebody. She's in the house with us as well. And on behalf of Lady Z, myself, and the entire HTC restoration family and the htc peeps i welcome you all to harvest temple church of restoration here where we strive to be a church for all people ministering to meet the needs of all people where pastor kate right where they are through restoration in christ hello somebody Yes, sir, give it up, give it up, give it up. Round of applause, clap it up for all of our first time visitors here. Listen, any and every first time visitor, we want you to know here at HTC Restoration that you are our exclusive VIP guest. Yes, every guest that is here at HTC Restoration that comes and visit, you are our exclusive VIP guest. And listen, for any and all first-time visitors, if you will, text the word WELCOME to 77411 so that we can uh, get a welcome packet out to you, all right? So please do so. Make sure you do that. Uh, and if you don't have texting abilities, just drop in the comment section the word VIP, all right? All right. So we are still, uh, we are in week three. We have one more week left in our uh, series entitled Focus. We have one week left. This is week three of our Focus series. So we welcome, hope you are getting something out of this. Uh, most of all, I hope that you are being focused. You're getting your focus back. You're focusing on the things of God. You're focusing on the good things that the Apostle Paul talked about. You're Focusing on the good life, the things of the good life. You're, uh, you've got your focus back. You've got your eyes focused back on Christ. And you're not focused on the distractions. You're not focused on uh, the situation, circumstances. You're not focused on what tomorrow is going to be like, but you're focused on today. So I hope, HTC, you are getting focused. I hope you're getting your focus back on the things of God. And so our foundational scripture has been for this series and uh, it will be for this series. Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy is he or she. Happy is them. Let me put it like that. Happy is them who keeps the law. What is the law? God's word, the Old Testament and New Testament. You can't have one without the other. Hello, somebody. Proverbs 29, 18. That is the foundational scripture. All right, so I welcome, welcome, welcome each and every one. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to uh, another day of our Sabbath Saturday e church service here at HTC Restoration. All right. So, um, if you, uh, if we can, let's go ahead and let me check my notes to where I'm at. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's get into this. And um, first off, uh, I just want to let me give you this big idea. Let me give you an idea to think about something to focus on as we're in this series, and not only in this series, but even for our lesson on tonight, all right? Just the microphone a little bit. There we go, I was sounding a little distant. Still sound a little faint, but it's okay. All right, so, uh, 
in today's lesson, what I want to talk about, what I want us to, what I want to point out is, uh, I want to deal with how we often uh, have temptations, uh, and our temptations that we have, uh, sometimes we have those temptations uh, not only to just make our own plans. See, some of you all have made plans to uh, attend and have vacations. Some of you all have, are making plans uh, to uh, your class reunion. You're making plans uh, for the family reunion. You're making plans for whatever the case may be. You're making plans. But we also try our hardest to make those plans happen. I need y'all to stay with me. We, we, we get tempted not only to make the plans, but then we, on top of being tempted, we uh, try our hardest. We go all out to try and make sure that those plans happen. And we are so focused on having it all figured out that we miss God's best in the process. But you see, the Bible is full of examples of people who trust God with every step. The Bible says it tells us that the steps of a good man are what ordered by the Lord. Uh, the Lord will light your path. He will be a lamp. The word will be a lamp unto your feet. It will be a light to show and to shine where you need to step and when you need to step. Hello, somebody. Make another mic adjustment here. All right. So, as I said, the Bible is full of examples of people uh, who trusted God with every step. And if you think the right thoughts and your eyes are fixed on the right person, then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, members of HTC, it's time to start walking towards the things God has for you in the future rather than focusing and being stuck in your past. So let me give you a question. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question, HTC. Will you learn to get out of his way? Will you learn to get out of God's way? Are you ready to get out of, <clears throat> excuse me, get out of God's way and let him lead and guide you? Hello, somebody. Are you ready to get out of God's way and let him guide you? Well, you see, uh, we're very familiar with this, that there is your way of doing things and wanting things to happen. There's your way. And then there is God's way. See, when you choose to do things your way, when we want to do it our way uh, versus God's way, you will find that your path will only take you as far before you begin to run out of gas, before you begin to run out of energy, before you begin to run out of your own strength and ability that has kept you going thus far. And if the truth of the matter be told, your ways represent your old life. Well, what's my old life, Pastor K? Well, your old life is your past. And in contrast, God's way means your new life in Christ. That when you do it God's way, then you are doing, you are operating in your new life, your Christ likeness. You're operating in Christ like or the life in Christ. And that, my friends, is your future. Hello, somebody. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that young, but I'm. Uh, I'm young enough to recall that uh, there was a famous singer, and I'm sure I got some folks younger than me uh, that's watching, but uh, there was a, a singer by the name of Frank Sinatra. You may be familiar with that name, if not, Google him. Uh, but Frank Sinatra, it was Frank Sinatra who uh, 
who 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 did a rendition or did a signature song and if you've never heard it i'm sure you probably have you probably heard it somewhere somehow some way but frank sinatra sung the signature song entitled my way i'm gonna do it my way and there's a saying that the young people back in the day used to say and we used to say it's my way or the highway but unfortunately because past scars and frustrations weigh us down this is not good because your way you may say i did it my way and you may say it's my way or the highway, but it's not good because your way is going to lead you to a place where there's no exit. In other words, you doing it your way, you're going to continue to experience yourself going. As another songwriter said, you got me going in circles, round and round. You're just gonna keep going round and round because there is no exit to doing it your way. And just because you want to do things or we want to do things in our own way is it is part of our human nature. And it doesn't mean that it works for our good. But it's all soon, but it all soon starts to become clear during the walk with the Lord that doing and doing things God's way works not just part-time, half-time, some of the time, but doing things God's way works all the time, every time. This is because God has my life, God has your life, God has every life of every human being here on this planet all figured out. God has the right pieces to make the puzzle of your life come together and fit together perfectly. See, doing things God's way supplies you with the spiritual energy, uh, the strength you need to keep moving when you are expected. When when them folks uh, counted you out, when they counted you down for the count, when they counted you that that this was it and you was you was going to throw in the towel and and give up and quit. No, this is the time when doing it God's way. He supplies you with the spiritual energy and strength you need to keep moving even when your haters are expecting you to stop and give up. Hello, somebody. God's way or God's ways are not our ways. As the scripture tells us in Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, it says, For his thoughts are what? Not our thoughts. Neither are his ways your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than your ways, and his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. See, the Bible also tells me in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, that there is a way that seems right to a person, but its end is the way that leads to destruction. Uh, I think the New King James translation says there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. So there is a way that seems right to us when we think we're doing things the right way and not only the right way, but our way. You got to be real careful because Bible tells us in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right unto man. There's a way that seems right unto a person, but its end is the way that leads to destruction. As Proverbs chapter three, verse five through six, it tells us trust in the Lord with all your what heart and lean not to what your own understanding. Don't lean to your own knowledge, but in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. See, people may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord ain't looking at what you looking at. The Lord looks at your heart. He looks at what you mean by that, Pastor K. He's looking at the motives. What is it that's making you do what you want to do? Who is it that is influencing you that's in your eye gate, in your ear gate, and, and planting seeds in your heart that's got you trying to do it your way 
and thinking that your way is better and right than God's way. Who is it? What is it? Doing things your way is temporary. It's temporal and doesn't last very long. But when you do things God's way, it is permanent. Because doing things God's way leads to life and not to destruction. Hello, somebody. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I am uh, coming to you all, and I just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. Thank you for another day that you have made, that you have provided, that you have given to us. And Father, I just want you to know that I myself, I'm guilty of being in your way on many occasions. And I ask that you would help me understand that you want the very best for my life and that you are the only one who knows what that is. And Father, I ask that you allow me uh, to deepen my trust in and with you this day and forever. This we ask and pray in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Yahshua Messiah. It is in his name, uh, Jesus Christ, that we say, Amen. Amen. And a uh, man, all right. So, I just want to welcome each and every one of you back for those that have been following us and been with us in our focus series that we have been in. Uh, I want to welcome you back to our third week of this fantastic series entitled Focus. All right, and I hope that uh, I hope you've enjoyed the content just as much as I have. Uh, throughout these last few weeks that we've been in this uh, series. And so far, uh, this is the foundation that uh, we have laid. This is what we have covered. Uh, we laid the foundation uh, for our focus in week one when we talked about focusing on the good things in life. And there are certain things that, would, uh, that the world uh, cannot give us. There's a lot of stuff and the enemy will try to deceive you and make you to believe differently. But uh, there are things that the world just cannot give us. For instance, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. But the happiness that you have, the world can give you happiness and the world can take that happiness away from you. The world can give you a, a brand new uh, uh Maserati. It can give you a, a brand new Rolls Royce. It can give you a brand new Beamer. And if they feel like it, they can take it away. Hello, somebody. So there are certain things that the world just cannot give us. And sometimes or some things that can only come from the Holy Spirit is what we should focus on. For you see, Paul calls us to be constantly thinking about these things rather than worldly, temporary things. And so last week, uh, last week we looked at and we talked about the story from Matthew's gospel where Peter uh, and the other disciples were caught in the storm and they experienced numerous different emotions and reactions and ultimately leading Peter to not just step out of the boat, but Peter stepped out of the boat and bust a faith move. And Peter began to walk on the water and he began to walk to Jesus. And we saw just firsthand what happens when someone loses their focus on Christ. Well, what happens, Pastor K? You fall, you sink, you, you drown. Hello, somebody. And, in, and, and when you have... When you lose your focus on Christ and instead you choose to look at the distractions and the circumstances going on, you tend to make that bigger and you tend to make your problem bigger than the problem solver. And now that that foundation for our focus has been laid, I want to take this concept of focus. I want to take it a step further.
So on today, what I want to talk about is I want to talk from the subject, focus on your future. God's plan for your future will always be better than your plan for your future. And so we're going to talk about and deal with focus on your future. All right, y'all ready? Y'all with me? Let's do this. Now, listen, uh, let me, let me give you this. Let me tell you a quick little story here, uh, about a man, very familiar, uh, very well-known man, uh, by the name of Steve Jobs. Uh, research would support that, uh, Steve Jobs and his brilliant creation of the iPhone and other Apple products didn't end up as they are now after just one attempt. But many of these products that you are watching me on, that you use daily, that uh, you probably are uh, totally dependent on because that's probably your, your life computer, if you will. That's your everything from your calendar uh, to your appointment setter, your uh, direction giver, all of that. You may be using uh, an Apple product. And as a result of this, uh, it, it wasn't just one attempt that made that product what it is today, but many of these products had to be significantly modified day after day, day in and day out to achieve what Steve Jobs and his team wanted it to be, wanted it to do. And I'm sure there were many times where he could have just chosen to focus on his past failures and simply just give up and throw in the towel. However, he was able to keep moving forward. He was like Toyota. If you ever watched or seen a Toyota commercial, their slogan is moving you forward. When you focus on Christ, when you focus on the good things in life, when you have your focus, it will uh, get you moving forward. Hello, somebody. So he was able to keep moving forward because he knew that once he had improved the iPhone, the feeling would be amazing. And so Steve Jobs and many others like him had a choice to make. And this choice, they had to make it every single day of their lives. Am I going to choose to be focused on my past failure or Will I choose to focus on my future? The ones we still read about today are those that chose the latter. Like these men and women, I believe we have the same choice in our relationship when it comes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know about negative thoughts and distractions that will try to weigh us down, but today, I want us to learn how to focus on our future. And this is not a future we can imagine ourselves. No, it is not even one that we can even achieve and obtain this future ourselves. Hello, somebody. I, I believe that today God desires to help us understand the importance of walking with him every step of the way and for us to allow him to direct our efforts. So before I break down a few critical elements involving uh, focusing on your future, first off, what does the Bible even say and tell us about our future? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, the Bible tells us here in Jeremiah 29 and 11, uh, and if you have your Bibles with your HTC, please turn with me to Jeremiah 29 and 11. And this is a very well-known uh, verse. You may have probably heard it, uh, quoted, 
or you've seen it on a t-shirt, seen it on a hat, a billboard, uh, learned it in Sunday school, uh, somewhere of that nature. You, you've heard it, you've seen it. You probably heard it, uh, vacation Bible school, grandma taught it to you, mama taught it to you, somebody you've heard say this and tell you this. And these words are from the prophet Jeremiah in the middle of a letter that he wrote to the exiled people living in Babylon at that time. And here's what he says in verse 11. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for all of us. And listen, the plans that God has for us, even though we may sometimes have plans that exclude and don't include God in them, God has a plan specifically for us and the plans are for good or one translation says for to prosper us, not to cause harm, not for disaster. So when there is disaster and harm in you going on in your life, I think I said this either Thursday night Bible study or I said this last week, but I, I remember saying this, stop blaming God when it comes to the bad things that are happening in your life. God says that I know the plan that I have for you and they are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. I'm not trying to take you out. That's not my job. That's what Satan is trying to do. That's what Satan seeks to do. He seeks to kill steal and to destroy. If he can uh, kill your relationship, your communion, your communication with God, if he can cut it off and if he can steal your joy, because I said earlier, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. The joy of the Lord is what, Pastor K? It is your strength. And if he can steal your joy, then he can destroy the rest of you. He can destroy your thinking. He can destroy the plans that God has for you. Hello, somebody. Listen, I, I could preach a lot from this one verse, but for today, I want us to focus on one key element in this scripture. God promises to give you a future. God promises to give you a future. I wonder how many of us have tried to create a future all on our own. Anybody with me? Has anybody sat and tried to plan your five year, your 10 year, your 20 year, your 30 year, uh, 40 years from now, tomorrow, next week, next year? Uh, have you tried to plan and create a future all on your own? You see, we are so often tempted to dream it up and bring it to be all by our lonesome, all by our little bitty selves. And Jeremiah is writing to a group of exiles who do not have much hope. It's like he's, he's like he's, uh, he has, uh, God has laid it on his heart to pin this message to those that's sitting on death row right now who feel like they don't have no hope. For those who may have uh, contracted COVID-19 and uh, they feel like everything is gone, everything is lost. They feel like, uh, oh, woe is me. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I got the light bill due. Uh, baby need a new pair of shoes. Hello, somebody. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, my ends were about to meet, but now it looks like my ends 
is going their separate ways. They they were going this way, but now they done they done turned and going the opposite direction. I can't even get my financial ends to meet. You feel exile. You feel like there is no hope. These are the people that Jeremiah is writing to, and these words promise them that God has a plan. Now, today, I need you to understand that God has a beautiful plan for your life, for my life, for every life of every human being on the face of this planet. Yeah, I know. I know so and so ain't living right. Yeah, I know so and so ain't doing right. But listen, God created so and so because the Bible tells me last that I checked in the book of Genesis that it says and it tells us that uh, God made man and he created man in the image and in the likeness of him. So before Junebug and Leroy uh, turned and, 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 and continued into the life of sin and iniquity, they are created in the image and likeness of God. So before you cast them out, before you uh, ostracize them, criticize them, before you kick them to the curb, just pray for them. Pray, pray the hell right out of folk. Hello, somebody. Somebody need to learn to do that. We all probably need to learn to do this. Pray and, 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 and just love the hell right out of folk, out of this wicked world that we are in. Hello, somebody. And sometimes it's it's hard to believe that God has a beautiful plan for your life because of all that you've seen, done and did in the past and that you encountered and went through. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. It often doesn't make sense to keep trusting God and trusting in his plan when you got a plan that you think that your plan is going to get you out of the hole, but it'll probably get you out of the hole today, but it'll put you in a deeper, uh, bigger hole on tomorrow. God's plans are much better than ours. Amen. It is so. Hello, somebody. For the Bible even tells us this in Isaiah 55 and verse 8 through 9, when the prophet says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could even imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Once we can live into this truth, we will begin to move out of God's way. That's right. We got to learn how to get out of God's way. Some of us been holding up stuff. Stop hold, stop blocking your blessings because you are in God's way. You holding up. You done clogged up and stopped up the flow. Hello, somebody. But church, some of us have been praying for a move of God in our lives. However, for God to move in our lives, we got to learn how to move out of his way we need to relinquish control and let him do the work stop holding on to stuff that you think that you can fix correct that uh you can solve the problem to just because it's small and mediocre no give it all to him relinquish give god control you sit here and you cut you tell me i, I hate you that, that good old uh, church cliche, you, you got that good church talk, that Christianese, you know, oh, bless, bless the Lord. Yes, I'm blessed and highly favored and, and the Lord, is, the Lord is, is in control. He's in total control of my life. No, he's not. No, he's not. Stop fooling yourself. He's not in total control because you still doing some stuff that you ain't, you still holding on to stuff, you still doing stuff you ain't even gave him control over. Oh, let me get up off of that I, I, before I go any further. I, I don't want to get in trouble. See, there are many different things that tend to keep us wanting to be in charge. You want to be large and in charge. Things that put us in God's way. This may prevent him from doing something incredible in and through you 
right now. So the first of three obstacles that I want to deal with and I want us to look at, the first obstacle is simply this. The first obstacle that we need to focus on getting out of the way is our past. Yes, learning to accept your past is a process and it isn't always easy. Mainly if your past is traumatic, if your past is heartbreaking, uh, first you need to allow yourself to see your past for what it is. Then what you need to do is acknowledge your thoughts and feelings. Then acknowledge without judgment. And there is really no right or wrong way to do this, right? And then there, then you, you have to see and learn from your past, learn from your past mistakes, learn from the things that you did or you encountered or those traumatic experiences, learn from the past as you unravel it all. And you may want to, uh, when you're done or you about in the middle, or you just start unraveling it, you may want to curl up in a ball and just uh store it all away and pack it up and put it away again and listen that's normal that's 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 a normal human being instinct and emotion and feeling however remember that accepting your past is not about wanting to change or forget about it it's about altering your perception of it so that you can live more freely. How are you perceiving? How do you see what transpired? Are you still angry, bitter uh, about it? Are you still angry and bitter towards whoever it was that opened Pandora's box too early? Are you still angry and bitter at whoever it was that, uh, that, that got you to turn up and, and, and turn out and uh, got, you, uh, got you high and all of, are you still, how do you see that? How are you viewing that? How are you, how do you uh, perceive your past of abuse? Do you see yourself free or do you still see yourself that in every person that you encounter, they say something, do something, they act a certain way and your mind relapse back to that moment. I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. I'm trying to help somebody today. So you see our past, it's about altering your perception of it so that you can live more freely. And the truth is we all, I don't care who you are, where you are, I don't care uh, what side of the tracks you grew up on. I don't care if you was born with the silver spoon, gold spoon, platinum spoon, or better yet, if you were born with the wooden spoon or no spoon at all. We all have a past and we all have a history. And when I say history, I'm talking about the things that we are not proud of when we look back. <laughs> Y'all know that song. The songwriter says, when I look back over my life and I think things over <laughs> all of my good day, all of my bad days on my good days, excuse me, they outweigh my bad days. And guess what? I won't complain, but you gotta, every now and then you need to look back over your life. Don't, don't, don't stay there long. Just kind of glance back, look back. Like you looking in the rear view mirror of your car. You don't sit and drive looking at your rear view all day because that's just a small view. That's a preview, but then you got a full fledged, full large windshield for you to see a better future and presence in front of you. Hello, somebody. Listen, I, I, I can remember A lot from my past. I, 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 man, I got, I got a lot, I got a lot of past. I got a lot of stuff from my past that I, man, whew, it, it, it is a, it's a long, long list. But I got a long history. I don't know about you, but 
I got a long history now. And, and when I'm talking about history, when I'm talking about the past and I'm talking about this stuff that we're not proud when we look back on it in our life. And I mean, all, not some, not part, not half, but I'm talking about all the things that cause and bring shame and guilt because of those past decisions that you made. I can remember, uh, I can remember when I was younger and, and, and people would tell me, you know, about the military, I would hear military stories and I would hear about people going into the military and then, you know, uh, a couple of friends of mine, when they graduated high school, they went into the service and, and this, that, and the other, and they would, you know, they, they come home and visit or they would come home and, and, and be the hometown recruiter or whatever. And they would tell you all these uh, awesome, fabulous stories and tell you all this. And, and I used to tell myself, I used to look at it and tell myself, man, what can the government do for me that I can't do for myself? And, and as I got older, I also, I don't really believe that it was more of a reflection of what the government can do for me that I can't do for myself. But I believe it was more of a rebellion that I had in me of what can God do for me that I can't do for myself. Hello, somebody. I, I'm just keeping it flat out 100 and real with y'all right here. Because I, I didn't think that there was anything possible. There was nothing that I felt that the, the, that, that the government could do for me uh, that I couldn't do for myself. And I would go out there and try to do everything and anything for myself. And a lot of it caused me to either get locked up, caused me to uh, get in some trouble here, there, everywhere. It, it caused me to have a uh, uh, a record and a rap sheet that uh, my father and I, I remember going and standing before a judge and the judge looked at me and says, son, looking at this documentation, looking at all this stuff that you have done and did uh, and then sitting here looking and talking with you. It's like I'm talking to a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. It's like I'm talking to two totally different people. And he was. And see, the chances are that you have some sort of story from your past which you are not proud of. And I, I have plenty. I have a whole lot of stories that I, I'm not proud of. I, uh, I, I've stolen stuff. I, 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 have, uh, I have caused all kinds of heartache and heartbreak uh, to my parents and uh, just done things that were just morally uh, and not only morally, but biblically wrong that I had to go back and allow God to right the wrong. Hello, somebody. And chances are you got some stories. You got something from your past that you are not proud of and you're holding on to it. And it puts me in the mind of the Israelites uh, the Israelites, they got to a similar place in the Old Testament where they simply did not know if they could trust God anymore. And those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me, flip with me over to Exodus chapter 16. For well, you see in Exodus chapter 16, at this point in the story, uh, Moses is leading the charge for Israel. And they were set free from the slavery and oppression they were facing in Egypt. Watch this. However, in verse 3 of Exodus chapter 16, in verse 3 of this chapter, we hear uh, some complaining, mumbling, grumbling, and griping from the Israelites directed at Moses, God's appointed leader. And it says this, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, they were reflecting on the past. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. Now they thinking now, now, now listen, they walking around in the desert right now and, and they, they, they're hungry. They bellies growling, they belly touching their back. They hungry. And now they start reflecting on their past and they're letting their past get the best of them 
as far as what they went through and what they came from. But all they can think of is, man, I remember we were sitting at the table, we were eating good. Man, them them, them hog malls and 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 and, and man, them chillings and and all that that they was giving it, man, it was good. We were sitting around pots of meat and we ate all the food that we wanted. But listen, look here, Moses, man, what's up with you, man? You you done pulled us out of that. You done brought us out of that and and you brought us into this desert to starve and, and to, to starve this entire assembly to death. Man, what's up with that? You see, this seems to be the other side of the coin when it comes to our past. For some of us, because past scars and frustrations have weighed you down, we have trouble trusting God for the future. Mm -hmm. See, others, uh, others of us may be like the Israelites here. We remember the past as better than it actually was. And what is your perception of your past? See, we remember the past uh, better than it actually was and would instead go back because at least we knew what to expect. Hello, somebody. See, trusting God with your future. Yeah, it's a very scary thing. You you, you don't know uh, precisely what it will hold. Uh, what will what will you have to walk through? Where will you have to go? Uh, where will God take you in the future or what it will even cost you? There are many unknowns when it comes to trusting God with our future, which is why we are tempted to move toward comfort. In addition, if we are not careful, our past comfort may have the potential to hold us back from our best future. Put this in your notes, HTC. Fear will tempt you to stay comfortable. Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't know that, huh? You, you wondering why you so comfortable and you like that job and that career you in and, and God has been trying to push you out into something else, trying to push you into entrepreneurship. He's trying to push you into something bigger and better, but you sitting there and you fighting it because you're comfortable. You know why you're comfortable? Because you're fearful. Because fear will tempt you to stay comfortable while faith causes you to go where you're called. God is calling you somewhere else. God is telling you, this is it. This is the end of the line. This is the end of it. Okay, so get ready because I need you to do X, Y, Z. Just like he, he told the prophet when he dried up the brook, he said, listen, uh, the ravens ain't going to bring you no meat no more in the morning. Uh, ain't going to be no steaks on the grill. Uh, you ain't going to be no steak and egg breakfast in the morning. Listen. I want you to leave from here and I need you to go here. He could have easily said, you know what, man, it was so nice to, to wake up and don't even have to cook because the raven would, would bring my steak and my egg and drop it here on the rock and God will cook it for me. I, mean, I was comfortable. Fear will cause you to stay comfortable. Fear tempts you to stay comfortable and faith will cause you to go where you called are y'all with me it's a risky business walking with god and allowing him to guide your steps even if we aren't too focused on our past and we don't allow this to hold us back there is the temptation to press the pause button on god in the present moment because mm -hmm. see when you don't know where you're going and when you don't want to go back from where you came from, you hit the pause button on your present. You say, look, I'm going to stay in this, this moment right here. I'm going to stay right here. Pause. Wouldn't it be something if life worked like that? If you could just, you could just pause for the calls. You can just whoop and be frozen. <laughs> Y'all like that? Just and you pause, you just, and you pause. 
there is the temptation to press pause on God in the present situation. And I wonder how many of us have read verses like Jeremiah 29 and 11 and have been tempted to only focus on our future. And in return, we convince ourselves it's all right to move God out of the picture right now when we put him on oop, pause. You put hit that pause button, you putting God on pause and you're taking God out of the picture from your presence. And this brings me to my next point. My next obstacle point is this. The first point is our past. That's one obstacle. The next obstacle that we need to hurdle over and overcome is the present. The future God wants to bring you into has a role to play in your life right now in the present moment. So what are you doing to prepare for what's next? God doesn't want you to just be, he don't want to just be the God of your future. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and what, Pastor K, forever more. He don't want to just be the God that bailed you out and got you out yesterday, but he wants to be the God that not only did he deliver you, but he is the God who now wants to provide and to show you a more better way both now and for later. He desires to have your full attention and obedience right now. But here's the truth. Some of us have sought to control our right now. Some of us, uh, we are controlling. We got the rings, we, we got the steering wheel, we, we got, we, we're at the helm of, of the ship and we are holding and controlling the present. Knowing that God's got our future, you trying to steer and guide your present and and now, now and then you look back over your past. Ah, I got to get away from that. I got to get away from that. Oh, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to do this. I got to do that. There was actually a well-known person in scripture who seemed to do this very thing. Who sought to control his right now. And, and that brings me to the book of second Samuel. Uh, chapter 11, and the Bible tells us about a man named David. David was king over Israel. There was a, there was one day, uh, an incident that happens where King David was alone in the city and he looks and he sees a married woman by the name of Bathsheba bathing. And in a moment of weakness, he called for her and he slept with her and he got her pregnant. And the story goes on to tell us that David actually had Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed in the heart of battle. He, put, he took him from the back and put him out on the front line. And he had the man killed in battle. And then he tried to cover up his sin. Sounds familiar to anyone? God was able to call out David's sin and still use him in mighty ways. However, in this moment, David was not focused on the conventional promise the Lord had made with him just chapters before. He was not focused on the future that was to come. He was only focused on his own selfish desire in the present moment. Similar to David, we are called to be representations of God to the world around us. Watch this. Did y'all catch that? We are called to be representations. We are called to rep the kingdom of God. You may not be familiar with uh, that terminology, but from the streets in the streets, uh, those gangbangers, they say, who you repping? Who, who you rep with? Who you representing? Who you with? We're called to represent God and the kingdom of heaven. 
to the world around us. But watch this. When sin gets in the way, it has the potential to distort how those around us view God, not how they view us. But through us, we are supposed to be the representation of the kingdom of God. And when they look at us doing and acting like them, they sit back saying, well, what I need God for? God going to have me acting and tripping and, and cussing folks out like that. And then turn around talking about hallelujah, pray the Lord. Man, I don't want no parts of that. I don't want no dealings with that. How many people do you think we have deterred from the kingdom of God? Because sin gets in the way and it has distorted how the people around us view and see God. Giving up control to God doesn't happen in our future. It needs to happen every single moment of every single day of our life. Hello, somebody. This is what it has to look like every day to us. Put this in your notes, HTC, to get God's future, to get to God's future for us, we have to move out of his way in the present. In order for God's future to get to us, we need to move out of his way now in the present. Speaking of acting in humility, this leads me to the third obstacle and the third prominent factor that often keeps us in God's way when we try, when he's trying to show us his way, when he's trying to get us to go his way. The third obstacle that we need to overcome is this. A five letter word, pride, pride. Israel faced this struggle, the struggle of pride in Joshua chapter seven, the walls of Jericho falls and victory is won due to the following of the Lord's commands. But the next battle, the next fight, they came to a little town near Jericho called Ai. That's right, Ai. And I ain't talking about artificial intelligence, but it's the city, Ai. Joshua, the leader of Israel's army at the time, sent some men to check out the land of Ai before attacking it. And according to Joshua chapter seven and verse three, when the men returned, this is what they had to say to Joshua. There's no need for all of us to go up there. Pride. Ain't, it's a little small town, a little small city. You know, they got, they, they got a few folk down there. It look like they got about, you know, you know, they got a handful. It look like they got a few, few, few down there that, that, that's, that's, that's down with, with fighting, but the rest of them look like they'll run, they'll tuck tail and run, you know. But, you know, the, the men go and they tell Joshua, there, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two uh, or 3,000 men to attack this little city of AI. Therefore, Joshua sent 3,000 men. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't guess that they would lose the battle. You think, oh, well, it, it, you know, Little small city, little small town. Oh, oh, they got this. But the problem was they got full of pride among some other things. And they didn't win the battle, but they lost the battle. They wanted to do this on their own. They didn't want the help of God. They felt like, God, we need you with us when we're fighting, when we're outnumbered. But now we, the numbers are in our advantage. So Lord, you just sit back. We got this. Lord, you just sit back. I, I got this. I, I, I can take care of this. They wanted to do this on their own. They didn't want to seek out God's leading on how to win the battle. They just felt like, oh, we, we outnumber them. We got this. We can go do this. Our pride 
or overconfidence will often try to get in the way of what God intends to do in us and through us, which is why, once again, this entire concept of focusing on your future comes back to the word humility. You need to humble yourself. God desires us to play the background rather than the forefront of our lives and our stories. Rather than it being your story, he wants you to turn your story. He wants to take your story and turn it into history or better yet, his story. Hello, somebody. For Israel, this was difficult. HTC, listen, church, please don't miss this. They were trying so hard to put God at the top of their priority list. When in reality, God wanted to design the list himself. This is something that we find ourselves doing. We try to please God in such of a way that we try so hard to prioritize uh, and put things in proper perspective in a list at the top of our list that we leave God off the list. Some of us have been doing the same thing when it comes to our present and our future hopes, dreams, and aspirations. We'll try to make God our number one priority on our list. We'll put God on the A list but don't want God to make a list of what he wants for us. Oh, say that again, Pastor K. We, we want to put God on the A list. We want to make God an A lister, but we don't want to, we don't allow God to make the A list. We want to put him on the list, but we don't want to make, we don't want him to make a list for us. So we'll try to make God our number one priority on our list rather than allowing him to create and be the list. So HTC, what I want you to do after you, you, you get off of the e-church broadcast, listen, after service, I want you to go get a piece of paper and I want you to, to take that piece of paper and, 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 and at the top of that piece of paper, I want you to title it God's plan for my life. And then somewhere at the bottom, I want you to put an X and a line for like, you going to go like, like you do for your signature. You know, when they say, I need you to sign right here by the X, I need you to do that. And, and, and this is why. Because I, I want you to grab the piece of paper and I want you to in that blank space between the title where it says God's plan for my life at the top and that space for your signature. In the middle of that, I want you to write down all the things you have on your priority list for today, tomorrow and your future. And I want you to look at that list and I want you to realize. Is this, is this list? And I know that I got God listed as my number one priority on my list. And that's good. If you got that, that's good. But what I want you to recognize, what I want you to see is that that is your list. That list is the list you created. That's your list. That's your list of priorities. That's your list of things you want to accomplish and do. That's your list. And then what I want you to do I, I, at the very bottom, I want you to sign it. Sign your name. Are you willing to sign this piece of paper? Not knowing what God has in store for you today, tomorrow, and in the future. Are you willing to let God be the list or are you comfortable and settled with God just being on your list? I want y'all to think about that. 
I want y'all to focus on that this week. Hey. Most gracious heavenly father, Lord. God, we just come to you loving Lord. I just thank you that there is so much happening uh, in our lives at this very moment. There's so much happening in my life at this moment. Changes seem to occur in every area of our lives, every area of my own life. Friends and neighbors have moved far away. Loved ones have passed on. Uh, tensions appear to be surrounding me on every side. But my hope and trust are in you. As I step out into this future, this unknown, as I bust the faith move right now. Hello, somebody. As I step out into the future in the face of all the changes and challenges that are taking place all around me, Father, I pray that you will continue to be with me, lead and guide me by way of your Holy Spirit, that you will help and protect, comfort and support. Lord, I cling to you, for you are the rock of my salvation. You are my defense and my defender. And I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And forever in this world of flux and change you are still and will remain the same thank you that you are with me in all these changes and 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 that you are with us in all the changing scenes and situations of our life and thank you that you are coming back soon yeshua messiah you're coming back soon to take all who trust in you trust in your name to be with you forever i cling to you lord for my hope and my future is in you alone we deliver this prayer to you jehovah god as we sign seal this request with the name that is above every name. That at the name of Yahshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. He is Lord of Lord and the King of all kings. It is in his matchless name that we sign, seal this prayer request now and forever in the matchless and mighty name of your son yeshua messiah jesus christ it is in his name we pray we say amen 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 in other words if you agree with that prayer it is so listen if if you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is what I want you to do. Text the word HOMEBOUND to 77411. If you don't have the texting capability, write in the comments. Salvation. For today is your day. Today is your day to now to focus on your future. We'll help you. We can help you. The Lord by the Holy Spirit is going to help you learn and show you how to deal and overcome your past. He wants to help you. deal with your pride and to become humble 
and to have humility. He wants to be with you even right now in your very present moment for the Bible says that he is our very present help in our time of need. You need a savior. You may feel like you got it all worked out, figured out, you got all this thing, you, you good to go. But let me tell you, you need a savior. What do I need a savior for, Pastor K? I, I'm good. You need saving from yourself. But there is a way that seems right to a person, but the end result is destruction. The end result is death. But Jesus came so that you may have life and have it more abundantly according to John 10 10. Hello somebody, if that be you, text the word homebound to 77411. Or maybe you've gone down that road. Maybe you have uh, one time you 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 have trusted and depended on God and and somewhere it didn't work out the way you thought it should. It didn't work out the way you wanted it to and so you decided to go a different direction well, listen he's ready to restore you right back from where you walked off from he's still there he said i never leave you nor forsake you he's still in that one spot while at the same time he's been walking and talking with you all this time he's omnipresent i mean he's everywhere he can be in more places. But you see, the God that I serve, the God that we love, the God that we worship, he's not limited to time, space, and matter. So if that's you, text the word homebound to 77411 or drop in the comments. Let's use the word home. Cause you want, you, you returning home, you coming on home. You're like the prodigal son, you ready. You done been out there, you done waddled in the pig pen, you done, you done, you done experienced, you done spent up all your inheritance and you done now come to your senses. Man, this life that I'm living, man, it's got to be a better life. Yes, it is, there is a good life. There's a good life, there's an abundant life with Jesus Christ come on back come on back maybe you've been with us for a while maybe you're saved sanctified five baptized full of the Holy Ghost maybe you're looking to join maybe you're ready to plant your roots and you're ready to blossom it this is a good place for you. We're Bible-based, Bible-believing. We're full gospel. That's right. We're full gospel here at HTC Restoration. We believe in the full gospel, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. The full gospel. If that's you, and the Lord has pressed it upon your heart to join and be a member of HTC Restoration, Right there on the screen, text the word HOMEBOUND to 77411 or just drop in the comments, NEW MEMBER. And we can instruct you on where you need to go from there. All right? All right, it's giving time. Here at HTC Restoration Tithes and Offering, marching coming down the, the e-church service aisle with your tithes and your offering come on i see you 
I see you bobbing your head, patting your feet. Come on. God loves a cheerful giver. Break it down. Hit it one more time. Hit the horn. One more time. Bring it back. Listen, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, looking at verse 10, it says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown today, the seeds that you all have planted financially today, the seed that you have sown and Increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberally, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank each and every one of you all. May those who were able to give, Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one of us. Bless those who were able to give, those who uh, wanted to give, but right now don't have. But God, I just thank you that they uh, they sold their time, their energy. They sold in other ways other than financially today. And Father, even those who sold financially and those who had to give and those who didn't have to give but wanted to give, Father, we still ask that you bless them like never before. Increase them in every area of their life. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We declare and decree increase over their life. This we pray in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Yahshua Messiah. We say amen, amen, amen. Commercial break. Shalom. Welcome to Keeping the Faith Podcast with your host, Pastor K. Hey, I created this show for faith partners just like you, seeking inspirational and motivational encouragement to help you maintain your faith during difficult times. Did you know that life is choice-driven and those choices are both long-lasting and life-changing? If you want to hear more of this podcast, 
make the choice, subscribe, and tune in to Keeping the Faith Podcast. And remember this, faith is expectancy. So what are you expecting from God? And that's right, Keeping the Faith Podcast with your host, that's me, Pastor K. Listen, if you are looking for a podcast, not just to, uh, that will tickle your ears, just something for you to just pass time and listen to, but if you are looking for a podcast that will inspire, motivate, and encourage you in the faith and encourage you to keep the faith during these most difficult times, then I highly recommend I, I, I'd I like for you, I would love for you to go and check out Keeping the Faith podcast. It is now available on the current listening platforms, Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Radio Public, Breaker, Pocket Cast, CastBox, and also on Overcast. All right. So real quickly, I want to thank each and every one of you all. Uh, that are faithfully following and listening to Keeping the Faith podcast. Thank you to my faith partner supporters. Thank you for your monthly financial contributions. Thank you for all my listeners. And listen, if you also are listening to Keeping the Faith podcast and you want to know how you can contribute and uh, how you can become a faith partner supporter uh, with a small monthly donation, that will help to update the equipment, sustain future episodes, and most of all, to partner with me to conduct community outreach projects that we are getting ready to gear back up on because uh, come July, uh, a lot of things are going to change and a lot of things and uh, uh, areas that have been dealing with COVID-19, the governor is about to lift the uh, emergency mandate uh, here in the state of Maryland. I don't know about where you are, but here in the state of Maryland, come July 1, some things are about to change. So we're getting ready to gear back up and get back out here in the community and do some community outreach projects. So if you'd like to be a supporter of this, you can do so one of two ways. You can just go to the website that says right there on the screen, podcast website. You can go to anchor.fm forward slash harvest dash broadcast. Click on that support button and you can make that contribution that way. Or if you are like me and you use cash app, you can go to the cash, go to your cash app, go to the cash tag, dollar sign, keeping the faith. That's dollar sign, K-E-E-P-I-N-T-H-A-F, the number eight and the letter T-H, dollar sign, keeping the faith. That's the cash tag. And I want to thank real quickly all my awesome, wonderful listening audience, especially all of you right here in the United States of America. And I also want to send a big thank you and shout out to all the listeners that are listening around the world in Germany, Russia, Costa Rica, South Korea, and over in Ireland. And I haven't even checked my latest update to see where else uh keeping the faith is being listened to i haven't even checked but i thank you in advance i thank you that the lord is sending this all around the world that the gospel and the faith of those will be motivated inspired and they will keep the faith and keep on believing in the things of god until the day Jesus cracks the sky and returns. Hello, somebody. All right. So, also, yeah, I got multiple hats. I got a lot of stuff going on, y'all. If you didn't know, not only do I just pastor that, that, that's, that's one of my, uh, that's one of my talents, but I have found and been tapping into other talents that God has been giving to me. Uh, the podcast is one. And also, if you don't know, now you know, I am also a published author on Amazon.com. I have a book currently out called Faith or Fear, which is your partner. I am also in the process 
of, of writing uh, the latest book that is about to drop August 31st. If the Lord say the same and delays his coming, it's entitled Opposition Releases Opportunity. Now, you can get your hands on your ebook if you've got a Kindle, a Nook, or something of that nature electronically that you read books on. You can get an ebook. Uh, faith or fear or if you like some of us who like to make notes and highlight and do all that in a good old paperback copy you can get a paperback copy as well of faith or fear which is your part for today and in the meantime in between time in the same time you can also pre-order a copy of the ebook as i said if you read ebooks on an electronic device you can also pre-order the ebook right now for the book opposition releases opportunity now the paperback book that's going to drop uh somewhere around august i mean not yeah around august 31st maybe september 1 something like that once it's uh uploaded and and everything is approved and all of that through amazon but in the meantime in between time get a copy of faith or fear today I right? those principles uh, those things that we talk about in this book I guarantee you I promise you this you will need to know who you partnering with if it's faith or if it's fear there's some areas in your life you're probably not sure about that you probably thought you was partnering with faith and really you've been partnering with fear like we said tonight in the lesson Fear will keep you comfortable. Mm. See, we always thinking fear is something negative. Fear will always keep you comfortable and keep you from where faith is trying to take you. Hello, somebody. But get your copy today. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We at that point again. My time with you all is up, and I thank you all. Each and every one of you all that are watching us uh, by way of Facebook, by way of YouTube, uh, by way of uh, catching this through the uh, church uh, website, however you are viewing this, I thank you for your time with me today because my time right now is up. And I thank you for watching this e-church service that has been brought to you by Harvest Broadcast, which is a production of Harvest Temple Ministries, which is the Ministries of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. Listen, please do me a favor and check us out on our social media platforms, such as Instagram. You can find us at HTC Restoration. You can uh, like, follow and find us on Facebook at HTC Restoration. And also make sure that you check us out on YouTube and check out our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you click the like button, drop us a comment if you don't mind. But most of all, please make sure you go there and subscribe, peeps. All right. And after you subscribe, please make sure that you go over and you click and turn on the notification bell. So that way you will be notified of all of the upcoming e-church services and things that we are doing here at HTC Restoration. All right. So in the meantime, in between time, until the next time, on behalf of Lady Z, myself, Pastor K, and the entire HTC Restoration family and the H. T.C. Peeps. I say Shalom Baraka. Peace and blessings upon each and every one of you all. And may the Lord watch between you and me while we are absent one from another. But never, ever are we ever absent from the presence of the Lord. Why? Pastor K, for the eyes of the Lord are in every place watching the good and the evil according to the summons of psalms 34 until we meet again htc restoration y'all know how i do i'm out